There was a moment in the 2000s when even VP, uh, which was British Petroleum, uh, they had a separate tagline for BP, which was beyond petroleum. But then the boss got sacked, yeah. and they went back to business yeah. as usual, right? Yeah. So uh, we're back to, you know, okay, British Petroleum. But it's, it's fascinating how the fortunes and the woes of the oil and gas companies are under the spotlight, because as they go into more and more extreme reserves, such as in the Arctic, and where they're trading it against things like fracking, which is essentially shale gas extraction, um, it brings it right home because a lot of Americans are happy that the price of gas is so low but now they're stacking up the impacts of extracting that gas from right under their feet. It is poisoned water, there's a lot of land acquisition and it will in the end need to be replaced. But in the same moment as having extracted gas from the shale oils etc, what you've also seen is that a lot of the technology has suddenly become, well not suddenly, but over the last five years, it's become available. So let me just paint a picture for you. Um, I'm in uh, Tukana. I think to say I'm out there. And there's not really very much. There's no Wi-Fi, there's no water, there's no da 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 there's nothing really. Okay, so I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, hmm, in 10 years' time, can you imagine a situation where we have villages that are built with local materials, of houses that cost $5,000 at most, where the internet is available, the bandwidth is sufficient that you could not distinguish between someone sitting on a computer and having a small business there and someone having a bad day in downtown Manhattan. All right? So you cannot distinguish around the world. Because I don't know about your ISP, I'm just looking at your service, and I can't tell the difference. Where my house has got solar panels, but it's actually giving me a 24 volt output. Because now I've got a 24 output, and I can't kill myself with 24 volts, so you don't have to have a whole bunch of really, really sophisticated electricians. You put the wire in the wall, and oh, because of all that investment in big trucks that run on 12 volts and batteries, I can get a little refrigerator that runs off 24 volts, and a stove or a stove that runs on that. So the whole world of 24 volt and 12 volt technology is out there. So you can actually run a whole house with clean energy. You can provide lighting, you can provide heating, and you can provide cooking. You can even provide a washing machine, believe it or not. I've just seen 24 volt washing machine, which is quite bizarre. And then water being productively taken, the little water there is, being productively taken on every surface there. Now, I say you think of that as a dream of five to 10 years. A colleague of mine, who's a great designer, who's designed for a lesson, um, has just built a small village of 100 examples in the Namib Desert, doing exactly that. And he's coming here very shortly. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So there are great, great ideas that are being translated into community products, products, and they are clean technology. So I'm—that's why I say I'm tremendously hopeful that in this innovation wave, with the intellectual property.